So in this demo, I'm going to connect a Linux server that is located in the North Virginian region of AWS. It is um, just a T2 medium, small VM, um, and it has a public IP address. I'm actually going to protect the data over the internet. So you'll see later that I'm going to turn on encryption for the data transfer. I'm going to replicate to the Sydney region of AWS. So I'm not really going AWS to AWS, but I could, of course, go to any other cloud, or I could go to Hyper-V or VMware or Zen or KVM. Um, you can see I have a, uh, a CentOS uh, proxy server that's going to act as the interface between the data uh, being transferred and the uh, EBS volumes in AWS. You can see I have a scenario. It's already been created. I have done a, a, a test prior to this, and I've deleted and cleaned everything up. So we look at a couple of interesting points here. So like I mentioned, I can turn on encryption. I'll use AES-256 encryption. Also, there's a new feature in version 18 of RHA, which is this uh, uh, RPO um, monitoring. So I've just set in a time of 10 seconds, and I'll just see what, you know, what that happens with that, and I'll play around with that later today. You can see here I can specify my EC2 instance type that I want to use. I can give the virtual machine a name. Um, also choose whether I want to use SSD um, provisioned um, IOPS or magnetic storage. I can also choose if I want to use a EBS encryption. Um, now, an interesting new feature, if we look at our, our network settings, we've got a few options. We can choose our VCP. We can choose our security group that we want to use. We can also assign a, a static IP address, a predefined IP address to use for the replica VM. And if we want to, we can um, generate a, a public IP address for the replica VM. So there's a, a couple of things I wanted to, to highlight. Um, the scenario is pretty much all, all set up and ready to go. Um, so I'm just going to save the change that I made. and. Um, initiate the uh, synchronization of the data. Um, when I click on run, I'm going to select my synchronization type. It's block level because this is a full system. It could have databases on there as opposed to file level synchronization. Um, that's going to begin the process. We can see a bit of activity at the bottom in the, in the logs that um, the scenario is starting. We should shortly see um, that uh, a, um, a virtual disk has been created and the replica environment is being, being created. I can have a look at some of the sticks just to see the performance. You can see um, it's fairly slow. It's coming from North Virginia to, to Sydney over the internet um, and it's going to progress in the background. In the meantime, I will stop the recording and resume once everything is in sync. We have um, some interesting stuff happening. So we have completed the sync. It, it was in sync. And then what actually happened is I had a scheduled task that kicked in, which is basically where we insert a bookmark into the, uh, into the data stream and take a snapshot inside of AWS um, of the replica disks. And I can notice here, as it actually happened, we, we got this EC2 bookmark created, but then that did kick up an alert to let us know that our current RPO is 82 seconds, and it exceeds the threshold of 10 seconds for the replica, which is pretty cool. But a short time after, it did mention that the RPO has come between normal limits for the host replica. Um, I can actually find that um, uh, information if I look at the properties of the, of the proxy server. Um, you can see what the RPO is in terms of ratio to its uh, its uh, defined threshold, which we set as 10 seconds. Okay, so what I wanted to do is, is just do a couple of little um, demonstrations of the um, data transfer. So I'm going to use um, WinSCP. 
I've got here my North Virginia VM and the Sydney one. So I'm just going to open both of these up. And the first one and the Sydney one. So you can see here um, the path that I've selected on my uh, on the proxy server is actually it's actually where the the replica disk is mounted on that proxy server. In the folder is the um, effectively the home folder EC2 user. On the North Virginia server, you can see I do have just the home slash EC2 user. Um, so I think if I go into one of these folders, which I'm just browsing actually the RHA um, uh, installation media, and there's a whole bunch of files here. This is actually located in uh, in Sydney. I'm just going to drag them across. So I'm actually going to, just going to copy them to the uh, to that folder on the North Virginia VM. Now I can't minimize this while it's copying, so I'll just wait for it to finish, and then I'll flick over to the uh, um, session on the Sydney-based VM. Here you go. So I'll just click refresh. And there you go, all those files are there. That's basically the real-time replication as it happens. I copied the files to North Virginia and ArcServe replicated them back to Sydney. Um, that's just, just a demonstration of the of the real-time replication. Now what I want to do is just do a, a, a failover. I'm actually going to do an assured recovery test, which will spin up the replica VM inside of the Sydney uh, region of AWS without affecting anything in North Virginia. So you can see here there's a little uh, um, button here I can click to bring up the um, replica testing. This is one of those features that is available um, to be scheduled. So you can automate this on a, on a frequent basis to verify that your DR solution is working. Um, you can see here this is um, the, the options I get. I've, I've got a checkbox for manual testing, and that basically means the VM will spin up in Sydney and it will stay running and, while I can do testing on it. Or I can deselect that option, and it will um, once it, it picks up the two uh, status checks from the AWS console, it will consider it to be successful and will. Um, um, power off the VM and resume the protection where we left off. So I'm just going to choose manual testing for now and click on OK. Now see some activity here. We can see the status. We've got a nice little tick here telling us that we are doing an assured recovery test. Integrity testing is in progress. And we can see the logs have, have changed as well. Now what I want to do is flick back to my Amazon console. And there you go. They can see the VM is being created. If I uh, flick over here, we can see how it's successfully been created. Ah, there you go. Two out of two checks. Um, it's good to go. We should be able to see here now we've got the message saying that the replica is ready for manual integrity testing. And this is where you would you would uh, connect to the server, check your databases, and, and do whatever. Um, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to uh, complete the, the testing because, like I say, it was a manual test, so I need to end it by uh, clicking on the uh, integrity testing button. And it says, would you like to, are you sure you want to stop it? And I say yes. And what's going to happen if I flick back to uh, my Amazon console? There you go. It's already been stopped. And the uh, those replica disks will be reattached to the, uh, to the RHA proxy. And the protection will be resumed very shortly. OK. And we have a successful test. So we can say um, testing is finished. Uh, we've posted the, the status reports and replication has been resumed after uh, integrity testing.